It's array jobs. And we're yeah. actually right on time. So should we try the same thing we did yesterday, where we really quickly discuss things and go to the exercises? Yeah, I think and that's... And then do a post-discussion. Yes, that's... Uh, and we can then think about all yeah. of the... Like, like I'll, I'll quickly okay. mention, like, throughout these coming sessions, we have exercise for all of these, but it's very, very hard to create exercise. Like, I used all evening yesterday trying to figure out better exercises. It's very hard to create exercises that show the, uh, the, the concepts, and at the same time, they can be run on every kind of a cluster. Like, they are not <laughs> only on us, on our cluster, because that would be, like, not not nice for for people who are running in different uh, setups. So so the exercises, if you encounter the, if you think the exercises are like if you don't feel that they they sh demonstrated uh, what what you would want to uh, like if you, if you have more more stuff you need to uh, uh, like you would want to do more, then ask in the ask in the notes about like does this app is this applicable mm -hmm. for your program and maybe we can answer that but yeah like it's very hard to write yeah. the exercises that are like these might seem trivial exercises in some sense but yeah. the point is that they're trying to show show the yeah um, mm -hmm. show the mm -hmm. concepts okay so we just talked about this. we showed the picture so i think we're good there should we go straight to an exam okay Good. So, um, okay. So, what do we do? Should well. So, what's the difference between array job and what we did yesterday? So, so yes. So, so we just mentioned the scheme of the embarrassingly parallel. So, so it, there was a question in chat. Why is it called embarrassingly parallel? That's because like. It's embarrassingly easy. <laughs> it's easy to do, and and this um, <laughs> in in like it basically means that you're running like if you think that you would run like su same command on multiple terminals at the same time, that's basically what this is. But it makes it so that each of these terminals or each of these mm -hmm. uh, commands gets executed in a different place with its own like with that definitely has the resources yeah. to run the stuff. So, so previously, when we were running stuff in the queue, we were using these serial jobs and these SBATS scripts. So in the, in the script, we had written what sort of requirements we wanted with the comments, the SBATS comments. We were putting their uh, like time, time required, memory required, that sort of thing. And then we were putting whatever code we wanted. And when we submitted that to the queue, that got executed somewhere. So what if we do that, but we do that multiple times at the same time? And this is the idea behind the array job. Uh, so with the array uh, job, we have this array uh, syntax or this comment, this uh, sbatch comment. So over here, we have an array that goes from zero to, to four. So it goes from zero, one, two, three, four. And what Slurm thinks when it sees this comment in your SBAT script, in your like normal script, it will understand that, okay, the user wants to run five copies of the same thing. I will book five different jobs, but as, as a, like a collective. So, so like, or I will book like five jobs that are independent and they are called an array job. And all of these jobs are the same, exactly the same. And the only difference is that Slurm will set this one environment variable called Slurm array task ID. An environment variable, I don't think we mentioned it yesterday, but these are basically like stuff that you can then use in your uh, in your script. So they are like like variables set to the terminal. And when Slurm sets this uh, environment variable, you can then do whatever you want with that. As long as like that does something, uh, so you can choose let's let's say a da data set, or you can choose a different parameter or something. Uh, if you like, there, and there are multiple ways of doing it, but you you can use this environment variable to, to decide what the program wants to do, basically. 
So if the number is zero, I'll do something. If the yeah. number is okay, one, yeah. I'll do something. So maybe we should so just for, go to the for example. example. Like last night, I can make an array job from zero to four. The job zero processes the zero video in the list. One processes the first, and so on. Yes. Or something like that. Okay. Let's. Um, can we see an example? Yeah. Let's just here we let's go. Just do this first example okay. here. And... So Richard is now uh, going to the SPC examples repository. So in in his home directory. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. At this point, I, I again say that it's a good idea to log in to your cluster and uh, and go to the HPC examples folder so that you can yeah. then do the same kind of thing. Okay. So let's create a new file called the array example. So there's SH. Okay. I'm making it with a dash instead. Yeah. So Should I'll in... copy the basic stuff. Yeah. So Let's uh, let's uh, focus well, quickly before we let's... move forward. Yeah. Okay. This yeah, is let's... the basic stuff we did yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So so the basic stuff. So, so here we see that this is basically like a, a normal normal like stuff that you would add to any kind of a, a like a, a Slurm script. And now we are adding two lines. Actually, here we have a one line that has these weird characters. We'll talk about them. After we see the output, probably. But let's just let's just use those because we, uh, they, we'll see what what mysteries they will provide us. Yeah. So and I guess this sets the output file somehow. Yes. And then let's add the array thing. So here okay. we have an array from zero to fifteen. So we can calculate that. Okay, there's sixteen, um, sixteen different like jobs that we expect. And now let's mm -hmm. put some commands below there. So what Richard will place here is that he will put the command called echo, which will just print stuff onto the screen. And yes, and then he will put this environment variable here. So what we expect, like if we look at this code, what do we expect? We expect that the when we give this to Slurm, Slurm we would book us 16 jobs, one with each array ID. And each of these jobs should print something like I'm a ta array task number and then the number that they've been given. Mm -hmm. So let's see if this happens. Okay, so I will control X to exit and save. And should I S batch it? Yes. And Just again, sure uh, when we're talking about bash and S batch, remember different words. They are very hard, yeah. <laughs> annoying to, to pronounce. But s batch so to I s batch it. array example dot sh, and then should I slurm q to see how it's going? Yes, it might. Let's hope that it's not finished. Okay, so now we okay. see that there's lots of these jobs now. Like we something really happened. So and at the start we see that there's like strangely two numbers now at the start, and we noticed that the first number. Uh, before the underscore is some number, and then after the underscore, we have another thing. And and this is very easy to decipher. So the first number is the Slurm job ID. So when you give this array of the Slurm, it will make one of these job IDs for the whole whole uh, submission. And then it will, with this underscore, separate the error ID. So each of these second numbers corresponds to the error ID. So let's yeah. check what the output is. So if you type ls, oh, okay. now we That's see a lot of files. Yes, and and if you look at the pattern of what's in the, in the name of these files and compare that to the pattern that we put into the spat script. So in the spat script, we wrote dash dash output equals array underscore example underscore, and then this percent capital A underscore percent small a and these are basically wild cards there are a few of these in slurm uh, you can find them all in the slurm documentation or espatch documentation but basically what slurm does is is it fills the array job id and the array task id to these environment variables 
So then, then like you get this fancy and nicer looking output, and you and the outputs don't crash. The main point is that like if you write all of these, if if you would have only one output file, then everybody of these would be right into the same file, and that like it makes it impossible to see what is the output really. So what you want to do usually is to dive uh, divert the output into each uh, so that each task gets its own. Uh, Oh, each yeah, each uh, array task gets its own output file. So let's look at one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at the zeroth one, I guess. Yes. I will use the list program, like I do. And yes. I'm array task zero. Should and I look at a few others? Yes. And Q to quit there. Yeah. So I guess like. Yes, and do you want to show like Slurm history? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we look at the Slurm history, uh, do they all end up on the same node? Uh, uh, like you, I okay. think you zoom can so that make it smaller. Yes. So 30, you see that thirty-one. Yes. So you see that many of 36. these ended up onto. Uh, onto like CSL 44, 36, 31. They ended up on different machines. So they are completely independent and they can end up to different places. So the main thing is that they got the memory and the time they needed. And and they all get the same request. So it's there's no multiplication or anything like that. Like you don't have to divide anything or something. Like it's just like they all get the same resources. They get the same time same memory and they are completely independent. So each of these gets 200 megabytes of memory and 50 minutes of time uh, as per the request. So yes, let's, uh, I think we could. So yeah, what the... else is there before the exercises? This is basically the main idea. Yeah. So, so yeah, maybe, got... yeah, some we can go to the exercises. Here. But yeah, we have some examples here of different mm -hmm. ways you can use this array. So you can basically, yeah. let's say you have different input files, you can put it the array task ID to decide which input file to use. You can use this, uh, this case uh, syntax. Uh, if you scroll a bit mm -hmm. down, uh, this like here. case syntax to decide on, like in this case, based on like the Slurgram array task ID, each job will this is more... choose a different parameter there. You can also this is use... bash syntax here. Yes, that's so bash. bash doesn't just let you type stuff, but it's a whole programming language for running things. So depending on what this is, it sets a C differently, and you notice it gets put as an argument here. Yes, and uh, and you can also like read full lines from a file. There's an example of that as well there. And mm -hmm. and even more things you can do, uh, but but I yeah. think now it's a good time to maybe ju just jump to the exercises, and then yeah. let's return to these afterwards. So in the exercises, we'll run the we previously run the pi dot pi uh, to to run multiple uh, like we run the simulations of of the pi uh, iterations. So in this case, let's let's do iterations in the array jobs and let's let's collect them together and get the better estimate of pi and yeah. uh, in the first exercise i will mention that like part of the output of the pi dot pi is thrown into this standard error uh, and part of it is thrown mm. into this output file so if you just like use this uh this batch that's just error you will you can like get the Get the JSON output and the and the rest of the like human readable output separated. So so that's why it's it's mentioned there. So but yeah, let just try running these um, exercises and let's see what happens. Let's see how they. Yeah, and, and I guess and we ask... come back. Yes. Uh, after. Well, when do we come back? After, well, it's almost break time now. So should we give 15 minutes to work on it? So come back at 15 past the hour? 
Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And ask your questions in the chat. There's already like a few good questions. We'll try to uh, answer them. Okay. So here we are, exercise info. Um, yes, so now's the time you may have lots of questions about how to actually use this. So do let us know. Yes. Okay. So see you in about half an hour. See you. Thanks. Bye. Hello, and welcome back. So it looked like people didn't quite have um, their exercise didn't quite work out. Yeah, so they were. We do, should we go over them? Yeah, maybe we should quickly go through the exercise uh, one. Do you want to show yes, it? Over? I will come back yeah. to it. Okay, uh, to, oh, I'm not sharing. Uh... Okay, here we go to my screen. Yeah, we'll add okay. up the code in the future so that we, it has a flag so that you can quiet the rest of the output or something like that so that we don't have to worry about the error, error yeah. thing. Uh, that's something that uh, we'll have to modify in the exercise in the future. So, um, yes, where are we? So exercise one. So we'll have an array job that combines different iterations and seed values and saves them to different files. Should I open a script? Yes, uh, let's call it like a... I know. Array exercise one dot sh. Yes, and yeah, let's put the and usual liturgy there. So in this case, what we want to do is like, okay, we have, we want to run multiple different uh, seeds, for example, like, uh, and for to do that, uh, let's use the case statement. So let's uh, in the in the previous like possibilities of how you can use the uh the slurm array task id there's this uh this case statement so this is like richard mentioned like bash has its own way of like like it it has its own programming language so you can use these case statements here so based on the value of the slurm array task id let's let's choose numbers for the iterations and for the seeds mm. Does this look good? Yeah, let's. It's well, really we can good. try it out. Doesn't doesn't hurt. Yeah, and let's run a few of these. Okay, and then uh, yes, we run. probably have to uh, close the oh, case yes. statement and uh, change the numbers so that not everything is oh, zero. Yes. <laughs> And of course, we want to apply the array statement in the at the top. Yes. Okay. So this yeah. array will be zero, two, three. Yes. So, yeah. And, uh, slurm pi oh. dot pi. Yeah. Hmm. And then that number of iterations. Yeah, let's let's put like what we had in the um, in the exam exercise. Like, let's put the output files and the error files. So in the in the code, like some of the stuff is printed to standard error. In the future, we'll add a flag there that you can silence the, like doing this number of iterations, these kind of debug flags. So let's let's for now let's let's just like put all of the like the. The output here is the like the output of the code, so the output mm -hmm. uh, that we want the JSON output, and, and then the error uh, 
that needs to be the dispatch error. Ah, uh, yes. Uh... Yeah. So let's 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 put the rest of the uh, printing there. Yeah, we'll adapt this in the future. Yeah. But you can okay. you can do this like you can do it in any code. Like it doesn't have to be aggregate code. So if you want to put the errors somewhere else than the output, because sometimes stuff can print like like uh, debug stuff and the standard error. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Let's run this. Uh, does this look good? Just How many problems do you think there'll be when we try running it? Uh, it looks. I guess the main. It looks good oh, to me. Yeah. I see. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nice yeah, yeah, and I need to make sure I'm in the correct directory where yes. slurm pi dot pi is fine. So I will exit and save. Control X Y. Yes, I will list slurm pi dot pi to make sure it's there because if I wasn't in the right working directory, this wouldn't be found. Okay, should I s batch it? Yes. Uh Are we ready? Yes. Let's go. So two and three are running. Those are the larger number of iterations. So I guess it makes sense they're taking a bit longer. So maybe we want to check one of the output files that already finished. And they're done. Oh, yeah. So I list. So we see array exercise one, error and output two, three. So yeah, this first column is what we expected. So should we first list yes. the output? And this time I will use the cat program so we can see them both together. So cat yeah. has just that in it. And if we cat the error, so this is actually doing what we'd expect it to do. So yeah, but yeah, so we shouldn't write in the standard error. I think we should just sil the... like add a flag to silence the mm -hmm. output. Yeah. So this yep. is how some programs work. So the idea there's two different output streams. So the output has only the like primary output of the program that will be reread. And um the error contains these other status messages. If you needed them both and you didn't quiet it. Okay, um, so yeah, in the should we list a different one? Uh, I think we need to move forwards, but maybe I could answer one of the questions uh, in the array array job questions that was really good. Uh, if you'll share my screen, so okay, there was a... uh, oh, I'll have to start the you screen. You need to share. Yeah, I'll take the screen over. Yes. So there was a question in in the notes about like how could you use, for example, use RA jobs when you're doing like uh, uh, like training a neural network or something, and and this is like very common thing. That, like the answer was that you can basically like run different hyperparameters and that sort of things like learning rates and that sort of stuff on different array jobs. So you can test out different parameter combinations. So this is quite often what people do with array jobs. So so. Let's look at this code, for example. So if you quite often, if you're coding something, you notice that you might have a for loop outside there, that you you do a for loop over some parameters or something, and then you do do run some code, and then based on the code, you like maybe plot out the picture or something like that. And this is uh, this is quite yeah okay, it's not showing fully. So this is quite okay. common. Sorry. Uh, so so you might have something like this. And for that, you might have a Slurm script that submits it that looks like this. But this is not optimal because here you cannot like adapt the like the parameters. You have to hard code the parameters into the code. And that uh, that's usually not a good idea because that's inefficient. You cannot easily change parameters and, and you don't know which parameters you use to run whatever. And Usually, the better idea is to use something like this that you write some sort of like uh, argument handling to your code. So, your code reads some co arguments from a command line, maybe from a file. I don't know. Like, it reads a file name. It usually needs to get some argument from the command line so that it can like 
determine what to do. And then it does whatever it's supposed to do. And if you have your code written like this, you can easily write an array job where like you have an array job and then you choose the parameter and then you run the code with that parameter. So this is like pseudo code. So it doesn't work actually, but, but like the, you get the idea probably. So you can now run this array job. And because we have the array, you suddenly have twice the like speed, twice the throughput of your program. So now you can run two parameters independently at the same time if they're completely without independent. modifying the code, yeah. which yeah. is the like important or, part. Or the only modifications you need that you need to have some logic in the code so that you can give it stuff based on uh, based on some arguments or some other thing. And this is good in in a technical sense. You you always want to write stuff that you can like. You don't always have to hard code the parameters of your models and stuff into your code itself. But okay, like, yeah. let's move forward. I think oh. we need to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so can you show exercise five? There's a oh, quick yeah. question there. Uh, or should I share my screen? Yes. Yes. I'll you come can back share. to my screen. Yeah. Okay. So exercise five, someone had a question that we said we should go on soon, but we'll point out the point here. So. The point of the array jobs is that all the boxes are the same size, the same number of CPUs, the same amount of memory. So even though you can tell this memory user program to use different amounts of memory, they all have the same amount of memory requested. So either some of them run out of memory or some of them are requesting too much. And this is not sort of the right way of using array jobs, or at least not it's not how it's expected if the memory differences are this much. You could put another way. So postal services give box bulk discounts for shipping boxes of the same size. And just like this. Yeah. So if you if you put if you have programs that are like or if you have posted stuff that is very small and you put it in the huge box because some of your stuff fits into the huge box. Uh, or needs the huge box. That's not the most efficient way of posting stuff. Yeah, like so. So the memes like, about getting something from Amazon and it came in a box that's far yeah, too big. Yeah. So the reason is that they have like a bulk discount on these huge boxes, and then they fill it with like environmentally unfriendly like plastic or something to to make up the difference. So so it's the same thing. So when you're submitting as an array job you would want the jobs to be similar in size. Like some in some cases, if you have like, I don't know, you want to go through million things and all of these million things, they depend how long they run. So that they, they can be like, you don't know when they finish or something. So there are ways of like grouping the jobs together so that you get like similar run times for all of these jobs. Mm -hmm. Or you can make it so that like each job will uh, run a certain amount of jobs and then you wish that the mean mean goes towards like a certain value <laughs> so so if you run like if your jobs might take a minute or 10 minutes uh, and then you run like 100 of them the average starts to turn out <laughs> because of law, law of large numbers you, you start to reach towards the average so you can like decide the time based on the average of the like all of the small jobs but this is like again more complicated stuff and let's not go there but but there are ways of tackling these things but usually you want your array so jobs each box to be like each job it needs to be similar to the other ones if one has a higher memory consumption then it forces everybody to have a higher memory consumption and that's mm -hmm. not good 